We like to call the September County Legislature meeting to order. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Bankowski. Here. Mr. Shagnon. Here. Mr. Davis. Here. Mr. And we would like to call County Executive Borello to the podium in a presentation of the 2019 tentative budget. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the members of the legislature. Uh, I'm really excited to be here to present my very first uh, tentative budget. Uh, first, I'd like to start off by thanking our budget team, uh, Finance Director Kitty Crow, uh, Budget Director Kathleen Dennison, uh, Principal Account Clerk Janelle Hansen, and the rest of their team. Thank you very much for all your hard work. You did a fantastic job in preparing this tentative budget. You know, after eight years as a county legislator, uh, I was certainly very familiar and involved with the budget process, but being the county executive creates a whole new set of challenges and uh, we're going to start off with some of the challenges that we had here uh, in this budget. Uh, first of all, this legislature and my predecessor have done a great job of holding the line on taxes, but due to many circumstances out of our, that are out of our control, we've had to use the undesignated fund balance, our savings account, to balance the budget. The 2018 adopted budget, this year's budget, used $6.4 million from the undesignated fund balance. That left about $19 million in that fund balance, or about eight and a third percent. A comfortable and responsible reserve should fall somewhere between five and 15% of revenues. Now this year, earlier this year, we had to make an accounting adjustment uh, that moved $4.2 million out of the undesignated fund balance and over to the capital reserve, leaving just about 6.5% in that undesignated fund balance. So starting to get a little close in that comfort zone of where we want to be for our fund balance. So we, uh, we started the budget year also this year uh, with about a $4 million imbalance, so uh, a pretty steep hill to climb at the beginning. So uh, we had uh, that significant hurdle as well as others. So our 2019 goals uh, to, to start our budget process was I asked to deliver a structurally balanced budget that covers recurring expenses with recurring revenue. No property tax rate increase and no reduction in the delivery of services. So we start off by a, with a business principle, uh, the bushel full of pennies theory. And that is a penny by itself isn't worth much. Most people wouldn't even pick up a penny on the sidewalk if they saw it. But if you have a bushel full of pennies, that adds up to some real money. So we talked about the bushel full, hold on a second. There we go. <laughs> Mr. Nebel always has to throw his two cents in, so I, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, well, the rest of them were in your seat cushions, which is where I got most of these. So, uh, <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> so, we challenged our, our department heads to come with their pennies uh, for their bushel. You know, we have a budget of two over $250 million with thousands of line items. So, to bring a few savings, minor savings, in all these line items can add up to a significant savings. That's essentially the bushel full of pennies theory. So we challenged our departments uh, to, to bring those small savings that would add up to help us close that budget gap. Uh, we gave each our departments targets to reach. So everybody had a target to reach that would help us deliver a balanced budget. I'm proud to say that almost every department met or exceeded its target. Some changes were small, like for example, Human Resources came up with a better way to print our badges that would reduce the frequent reprinting costs. You know, thank you Jessica, Jessica Wisniewski and her uh, team for that innovative change. Some changes were larger. As I will explain later, we are making major changes to the landfill methane energy plant, yielding larger revenue for the county. Thank you, Pantelis Pantelli, for your uh, involvement in this and for all you've done to, to make this work. And also, I'd like to thank legislators Chuck DeZaro, Pierre Chagnon, and John Hemmer for their involvement in the uh, negotiations, which I'll talk about later. Overall, I'd like to thank everybody that was involved in the stepping up to help us deliver this budget. So here's some highlights for my budget. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, we discovered that we had a re to reallocate about $4 million from the undesignated fund balance over to the capital reserve. While this certainly impacted the fund balance, it also increased our reserve for capital projects. I consider this an opportunity to beef up our capital projects and invest in infrastructure more than we ever have in years past. So as a result, we are taking that money and we're going to put $3.4 million of additional investment into DPF equipment and road and bridge improvements. $600,000 of investment into county facilities and $400,000 of an additional investment in other vehicles and equipment. 
the methane plant. Um, we started generating electricity at the landfill using methane gas and converting it to electricity quite a few years ago. However, with the declining electricity prices, the, the plant has begun to lose money. In 2017, we had a net operating loss of about $139,000. And this year, the plant will lose about $200,000. So the idea will be to actually shut down our methane plant and instead sell the methane gas to a company that will scrub it and turn it into renewable natural gas into the pipeline. We bid out this uh, RNG business to three different companies and as I mentioned with the help of some legislators and with panelists leading the way, uh, we've gotten a, a really uh, a good deal and a good uh, contract and that will generate more than a million dollars in net profit without guaranteed without any infrastructure costs, without any maintenance costs, and without having to be uh, subject to the fluctuation of energy prices. So this is a great way for us to build on our, on our uh, uh, fund balance and as well help to balance our future budgets as well. The fly car system, as we all know, uh, uh, the fly car system has faced some challenges budget and budget wise but overall it's been a fantastic program that has saved lives throughout the county you know something I said since my first year as a county legislator was what do really people expect for their tax dollars I mean we provide lots of services of all different kinds but what do people really expect from their tax dollars they, ex they expect that the roads and bridges will be maintained that the streets will be plowed and when they dial 911 they want somebody to show up that's basically what people want and the 24 7 fly car system, which is something that we are proposing, will allow us to provide life-saving help to folks that need it all over the county while closing our budget. Currently, the county fly car structure has filled an important gap in EMS services throughout the county. However, some areas still see up to a 40-minute response time for 911 EMS calls. By adding an ambulance, just one ambulance, that will allow us, because of the state's rules, to be able to bill for Medicaid services and also provide a 24-7 fly car service by just having one ambulance in service for us. We can reduce those wait times while also allowing us to bill for those Medicaid transports. Uh, also, uh, a, a program that's been brought to us uh, by Christine Schuyler, and John and Christine have worked to collaborate on this, is the idea of uh, having, essentially, have our EMTs do wellness visits. We have the frequent flyers, the people that call 911 often, and in, in many cases, for something that's not an emergency. Uh, we would be paid to actually go and perform wellness visits at those folks' homes to, number one, reduce the, the chance that they'll be calling 911 again, and reducing the strain on our EMTs and, and our emergency services but also being compensated for that so I'd like to thank John and Christine for working together to develop that program which actually helps us close the gap now on our fly car system electronic payments I uh, have to say coming from the private sector uh, I was surprised that very few of our vendors here in Chautauqua County are, are paid through electronic payments. Anybody who's owned a business or been in business knows that typically now you send things electronically. But we write paper checks. Uh, and uh, we write a lot of paper checks, which is labor intensive and costly. Uh, what we are doing now is we are going to make it mandatory for vendors to have to accept electronic payments. And, which was done to me when I was in business, we would like them to take our company credit card. Because when you take that credit card, we get a rebate from the credit card company, which will further enhance our revenues. We're going to make it mandatory to save money and enhance revenues by going now to all electronic payments for our vendors. We buy millions and millions of dollars of goods and services every year and instituting this will save a lot of time and make a lot of money for us, additional savings for us. Our health insurance program, you know, our employee health insurance costs account for approximately 8% of the total county budget. Uh, we are looking for significant savings by, re by aggressively relooking and rebidding our health insurance and insurance broker business. This is something that we've done right at the beginning here. It's been done over the years, but I think we took a really hard focused look at it and it'll be, it'll be providing a significant savings in this 2019 budget. Our purchasing policy, we're going to make some changes to improve our purchasing policy and improve the results that we get. Right now we are going to be requiring that products and services be bid out more frequently to get better pricing and reduce the contract extensions to ensure that we're getting the best possible deal. Right now, I, across my desk, I get a lot of extensions for things that go back years to, for the first time something was bid. We're putting an end to that. We want people to rebid these things. We want to ensure that we're getting the best price and that our 
vendors aren't being complacent. You know, we want to make sure that they're on their toes and they're giving us the best possible price. Um, also, I've challenged our Pershing department and our legal team to look for ways to apply common sense to the archaic state bid process, which often has us paying too much for products that are on the state bid, which we are required to do by state law. This, also, this process will also include supporting our local vendors better. Uh, right now we're going to be doing something where we'll be separating items on the bids to allow local vendors to compete for business that is often lumped in with proprietary products which often locks out local suppliers. We've instituted a policy of allowing the local bidder to match the lowest bid provided that their initial bid is within 10% of the lowest responsible bid. Ladies and gentlemen, county government should first support the local businesses that support county government operations with their tax dollars. So we'll give you a little overview of the budget. This 2019 budget totals over $254 million, while holding spending increases to just over $200,000. That is less than one-tenth of one percent of an increase in our expenditures. The fund balance, you'll see on this graph, the 2019 budget, if adopted, will use no unassigned general fund balance for the first time in at least 10 years, if adopted. As you can see in this chart, Assuming that there's no increase or use of the fund balance going forward, we will at remain barely above the minimum recommended amount per the financial policy adopted by this legislature and well below the maximum amount, the darker blue, the darker blue line above. And as our bond council has told us, having a structurally balanced budget is good for the county's bond rating, which means we will pay less interest when we borrow money for projects. This is responsible budgeting, which is what they're looking for when we, have, when we get our bond rating. It also means we can maintain a healthy fund balance for those unexpected cir circumstances and emergencies. And ultimately, a balanced budget signifies that we are able to live within our means without a burdensome tax increase lurking year after year. So the tax rates. In addition to achieving a structurally balanced budget with no use of undesignated reserves, this tentative budget will hold the line on sales and property tax rate with no increases. Together with the fact that we have not used any one-shot revenue items in this budget, this is a major achievement we have not seen in many years. There are a lot of positive trends right now in Chautauqua County. These positive developments in our county budget would not be possible without the significant economic growth we have seen countywide, along with important moves that have been made in the past several years by this legislature and my predecessors. Sales tax revenues are up, mortgage tax revenues are up, Occupancy tax revenues and property values are all up and seeing strong growth. So a structurally balanced budget, my tentative 2019 budget is structurally balanced where recurring revenues cover recurring operating expenses. There's no use of the undesignated fund balance. On top of the normal investment in infrastructure, there is a $4.4 million one-year additional investment in our county infrastructure. This budget will have many positive impacts on county finances by following our county legislature adopted financial management policy of having recurring debt uh, covered by recurring revenue. We have an opportunity here to pass a historic county budget, which is structurally balanced, uses no unrestricted reserves, holds the line on taxes, and invests in county infrastructure at an unprecedented level. Four items I believe have never been proposed and achieved together within the same budget year. So now I'm proud to deliver this budget to the legislature. I look forward to working with you all. <laughs> that was uh, the Gallivan's Gallery, uh, in, I think, in yesterday's paper. <laughs> so I clearly need to lose some weight. Um, and, and I'm very proud to work with everybody. Everybody stepped up. We now hand this over to the legislature, and I look forward to working with you all to pass what put, could potentially be a historic county budget. Thank you very much. Thank you, County Executive Borello.